Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel of mprugs.com. My name is Mike. I'm the moderator in the series of videos that is all about not just Persian rugs, but handmade carpets from around the world. I welcome you to our channel and I hope you and your family are doing well. In today's episode, I want to, this is actually going to be a two part series. This is part one where I'm going to be showcasing to you not just several types of pictorial Persian rugs, but I'm going to be using this design, this pictorial designs to showcase um, the weave in Persian rugs and also why at times there is a difference and not just in quality, but in workmanship and how it translates into the designs and the features. Um, there is a lot of folks um, who love Persian rugs. And if you are someone, whether it is you are into the pictorial rugs or if you're just passionate about Persian rugs, please, you may find this video to be of interest because you are going to be seeing things that are basically almost like a contradiction. Um, when um, people talk about the high-end Persian rugs, oftentimes the finer means the better, more expensive, and sometimes it can actually be the opposite. So using three fine pictorial pieces, we have a pure silk gom rug right here with a hunting design. We have a Tabriz with this beautiful horse. And then we have a very classic silk foundation Isfahan. We have three types of Persian rugs. All of them have a silk foundation. All of them have silk in the design. We have a pure silk gom rug. Then the Tabriz and Isfahan are both silk foundation Persian rugs. They oftentimes they are compared with each other. But what I'm going to be focusing on in this video, I'm going to show you why. For example, when it comes to the pictorial rugs, the type of knot and the type of dyes and the workmanship, how it matters. Um, and I'm going to be showcasing using this perfect uh, example of a Tabriz rug. Then in my other video, in part two, I'm going to sh be showcasing two absolute art pieces that even though they're extremely fine and they're almost like one of a kind type of rugs that are as beautiful as paintings, they're actually not as expensive even though they could be um, and there are such unique pieces that they belong in a video of their own so in this part one I'm going to be showcasing different types of pictorial rugs and I'm going to explain to you a little bit about the background and why sometimes the way the rugs are made can affect how they look and it's not the weaver's fault it's not really anyone's fault it just sometimes you will find that certain types of persian rugs are actually more suitable for pictorial designs than others and this is what we're gonna i'm gonna be showcasing and explaining to you in this video so to get started i what i did was i hung up three pictorial pieces. These are all new pieces. Um, as I mentioned to you, they're all silk foundation. Here we have a gom rug right here by my side. And this is a very traditional hunting design. This is something that a lot of my clients like. And you can get these generally. You will find them in um, various sizes up to the large size. And large meaning typically this is about as um, up to about two and a half by two meters and then they the selection starts dwindling down because the vast majority of buyers like to hang up 
these types of rugs. This is something that when the weavers, the workshops in Gom in Iran, which is located in central Iran, and it's actually um, the city of Gom, as you can see, is actually not that far from the city of Isfahan. The Tabrizis, they're on their own. This is where half of my family is from, um, and they are in the northwestern Iran. But Gom and Iran, uh, I'm sorry, Gom and Isfahan are located in the central Iran. Gom is best known for the pure silk types of Persian rugs, and they are, um, it's the pure silk Gom rugs and the Herake rugs. These are the best known pure silk Persian uh, handmade carpets. And I, every time I always say Persian, and I refer to the Herake as Persian as well, I'm bound to get some folks who have very strong opinions. Me personally being that I am who I am, to me we're all brothers. I do not mean to offend anyone. So when you do hear me using the word Persian to describe the Turkish Herake rugs, I'm not trying to offend anyone. I just, honest to God, it's a slip of my tongue. So I'm apologizing ahead of it. So here we have a gom rug. And as I always do, I write down things because while I can speak Farsi, as I oftentimes explain in my videos, born and raised in Germany, my parents taught me how to speak it, but they did not bother and I couldn't be honest to God, be arsed to learn how to read and write. I'm too old for it by now. So it says, Gom, it says Iran, Gom, and the weaver's name is Sharifi. And this is typical with the Gomrucks. You will have um, the signatures. Don't let dealers uh, sucker you into paying more because of a signature. The same with the Isfahan rugs. A lot of the silk found in the high-end pieces, they come with signatures. Unless there is a very special big deal about them, don't pay extra for it. If they tell you the fact that a rug is signed, just point out the fact that in the case of the pure silk gom rugs, well, 99% of them are signed. And so this is one of those gimmicks. Uh, this is done in Iran out of tradition, but unfortunately over the years, it has evolved into something that some people make a big deal out of. If the weaver is famous, um, I'm, like I said, I've never heard of him. He is probably, a, it's a workshop in Gom. We know the rug is obviously made in Gom. So, but I have personally no knowledge of the weaver. But this is a perfect example, pure silk Gom rug. Then over here, we have the Isfahan. And the Isfahan, again, I'm relying on my trusted Chichi. It says, Iran, Isfahan, Shah Hosseini. And you would think I would know that part of the name because Hossein was also my father's first name. But I still had to write it down. Do apologize, but as I mentioned to you, Isfahan, um, you can see it there. There is actually, there is a whole area of carpet weaving. Isfahan, within the Isfahan province, that you have the city of Isfahan, which is really a, a huge, one of the largest cities in that area. Then you also have Nain, which is, it used to be where the wool came for the Isfahan rugs before it became a carpet weaving center themselves. Nain is a small town. Then you notice there is Kashan and Go. So you, with a full gas tank, you can spend a couple of hours and you can go from, there is one, two, three, four large rug weaving communities. But in the Isfahan rugs, same thing. You have silk foundation. And like I said, I, I chose these three rugs on purpose. You have silk foundation. You have very fine weave. These have about, um, this Isfahan has about four to 500 knots per square inch. 
extremely fine pieces. Um, the pure silk gome is a little bit finer, has about six, seven hundred knots per square inch. Um, and this is right here, the Isfahan. You notice the colors, the blues and the um, everything here. This is very classic Isfahan. Now, in the middle, we have, this is a rug that I actually featured in itself. I lo absolutely love this Tabriz silk fond foundation. Um, also about 400 knots per square inch. Of the three rugs, this Tabriz rug is actually has the lowest knot count. Both the Isfahan and obviously the pure silk gome have a higher knot count than the Tabriz. But when you look up close, you will notice that when it comes to detailing, the Tabriz rug is actually more detailed. It is much more what I would call lifelike than the Isfahan or the pure silk gold. And here is why. The Isfahan rugs and the Gom rugs are both made with what is known as a Persian knot. Whereas the Tabriz rug is made with what is known as a Turkish knot. And while it may not matter to a lot of people, the fact is the type of knot and I'm just going to put it, this, these are two common, this is what a Turkish knot supposedly looks like. And here is a Persian knot. Now, in the real world, I have absolute no clue as to what those two means. I have seen the rugs being woven. Those illustrations mean nothing to me. Honest to God, I, I, what I do know is this. Persian knots, like the Gom rug and the Isfahan rugs, are what we call a single knot. And in layman's terms, I always look at my boots. I like my Doc Martens. When I put them on, I always put them in a double knot because I'm getting too old to tie them 10 times a day. So I have learned double knot, which is what the Tabriz weavers use, which is also what is used in the Turkish Herike rug. It's a tighter knot because it is double knotted and it's a stronger knot. But it also allows for something that you typically cannot get with the Isfahan rugs, with the Gom rugs, Nain rugs. The type of carpets that use the single knot when you look up close into the faces, whether it is the horses, I mean, like I said, this is a um, standard pure silk. This is a very fine piece. Whether it is the Gom rugs, whether it is the Isfahan rugs, you look at their faces. One of the problems that you find that I have seen with the Persian knot is that the detailing is not as crisp and it's not as real life as with the Tabriz rugs. And the reason for that being is the Persian knot, as I have learned, does is not as forgiving when the pie when the when the knots are woven. The Persian knot, the wool always comes up the same direction. Then they are carved. Imagine if the rug is woven. And now, here's an old picture of ours. This is about 20 years old. Um, my mom, I, when I sent, uh, I think this was pretty much the last time when she went to Iran to buy carpets. And I, I asked her, I said, you know what, do me a favor, take pictures of yourself 
with some of the weavers with their permission, and this is really big deal. In the Middle East, a lot of people are, are not too keen about having their pictures taken. But with the permission, here we have a young man, and you can see him holding a carving tool. This is something that a barber uses, or like I said, once a week when I'm in the shower, um, I just use the clipper. Well, when the rug is woven, it is clipped. But the reason why you can see that in the picture right there, he's, um, he is basically carving a Tabriz rug. And this is typical with the Tabriz rugs. Because of the type of knot they use, the young man can carve the silk differently, deeper than the rest of the rug. This is why sometimes when you run your hand over Tabriz rugs, you will notice, for example, in this area right here, if you look at the picture, you see that foot area right here? And you can see how when, you, when I run my hand over it, this definitely, there is right here. You can feel it. it. There's a dent. It's like somebody carved a piece of the silk out. You can do that type of detailing with the Turkish knot that you cannot do with the Persian knot. This is why, for example, when you look at the horse's face and you see the body, the shine, this is something that is rarely ever found, even in the pure silk gom rugs or in the Isfahan rugs or the Nain rugs. This is why, for example, the Tabriz rugs have, um, when you look at pictorial rugs, this is why the bulk of the high-end pictorial rugs in Iran or the ones that you see framed, and I have a whole bunch of videos in our YouTube channel about not just framing of rugs, I show you different examples. So please, um, I'm going to put a few links in the description, but do check them out if you are into, if you're thinking about taking a rug and maybe having it framed or hanging it on the wall. Made a bunch of videos about them. But um, what I wanted to point out to you was the type of workmanship, the type of knot, that's what I was boy, uh, coming back to, is that it's something that makes the Tabriz rugs perfectly suitable. You will find the Turkish knot. And in part two under this video, I'm going to show you perfect examples of what I mean when I say what I consider to be perfection in pictorial design in pictorial rugs. I'm going to showcase an amazing Tabriz rug and a Herike Aussie pack that are just mind-bottling. But in this video, I wanted to show you three typical examples of pure silk, wool, and woolen silk pictorial rugs. All three of them are very well-known types of Persian rugs that are known for the pictorial designs and for the high-end quality. And so what I'm going to do now is, as I always do, I'm going to get behind the camera and just showcase some of the features of the individual rugs, and then I'm going to come back to you and say my goodbyes. Um, as I've always done, is if you like the Persian rug channel, if you enjoy Persian rugs as much as we do, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Also, um, as I always tell folks, if you have questions about Persian rugs, leave them in the comments section or visit us at mprugs.com where in addition to the galleries with the details of all the rugs and everything, more importantly, or just as importantly, there's also my email link. I've had clients who like to uh, ask me questions about the rugs they have. And please, if you are one of those folks that want to ask me questions, there is a video link in this description below. In the video, I briefly explain to you 
what size pictures I need and what type of pictures I need so that I can come back to you and give you quick answers. Um, as our channel has been growing, I have been getting more and more questions. And like I said, this is something I do as a hobby and in my spare time when I'm not helping my family run our business. So um, I have absolute no problems answering any questions you may have. Just please, if you don't mind, watch the video in the description below so that when I get the information from you, I can come back to you quickly with an answer and I'd appreciate it. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get behind the camera. I'm gonna show you the details of the rugs and then I'm gonna come back to you at the end and say my final goodbyes. So I'm gonna see you again here in just a minute. For the second part of the video, I normally have the rugs all hanging up on the display and then I can show you the details. However, because of this gom rug, the way the lighting looked and everything, it was so faded that I decided I'm just going to take it off the rack and basically put it back to where it was on the stack so you can see it. So here we have the Sharifi, the gom rug. And what I was trying to, um, as I explained earlier in the video, if look on the faces of the riders as well as the horses. Keep this in mind. Um, and here, the same thing with the animals. Um, this is a pure silk gomrak. I mean, this is what you would expect to see in a pure silk gomrak of the caliber. Um, like I said, this one has about 600 knots per square inch. It's a really nice and fine piece. But when I talked about earlier with the detailing here you have you can see the deers you can see the plants um, but you will see that it is basically two-dimensional and this is the same whether it is the gom rug or as i'm about to show you as i walk over here in our warehouse i'm going to show you with the isfahan rugs the type of weave the persian knot makes it very, very difficult to give it a three-dimensional feel. And what I mean by that is I'm about to show you, I'm just gonna walk over here and I, um, I laid down these pieces because again, with the lighting and everything, it is simply so much better. Here's the Tabriz and here's the Isfahan. Now, the Isfahan is actually a finer piece than the Tabriz. But I'm just gonna, right here as I go back, notice the silk. You see how the skin of the horse, how it shines? This is something that you can, it's almost impossible to get out of the Isfahan rugs. And it's not because, there, it's not that I'm talking bad about them, it's just the weave, the nature of the wool, and also, as I have learned, literally, because of the type of knots, the Ispahans, same with the gomes, they are made with what is known as a Persian knot. Here you have the Turkish double knot. And as I mentioned earlier, when I run my hand over the rug, I can feel the indentation. This is actually, it feels like it's carved. I showed you the picture earlier of the young man carving, what looks like he was, he was using the hair trimmer. And this is what it is. Right here, you can actually, when you run your hand over it, you can sense that it's not just that they're using different types of colors, dyes, but it's actually, you, there is a thickness to it, a density. And this is something that you can do with the Turkish as well as the Tabriz rugs because both the Herike and the Tabriz are made with the Turkish knot. 
whereas the Isfahans, the Goms, the Nains, most of the other Persian rugs are made, the city rugs are made with a, what is generally referred to as a single knot, as a Persian knot. So I wanted to show you the close-ups. Now, as I mentioned to you, I'm going to come back to you right now and say my goodbyes. But again, in the next video, I'm going to be featuring two rugs that will take this to a whole new level. And there are such amazing pieces that I wanted to showcase them in their own video. So I'm going to come back to you right now and say my quick goodbyes. So there is our video about the different pictorial rugs. I hope you enjoyed the video. As, of, as I mentioned earlier, if you like to, please feel free to subscribe. It helps us out and we appreciate that. And um, like I said, if you have any questions, um, there's a lot of links in the description below, as well as if you need additional information, please feel free to visit us at mprugs.com. And again, uh, my name is Mike. It's an absolute pleasure to bring you the videos. I wish you and your family the very best and keep in mind in part two of the video I'm going to be in the second part I'm going to be showcasing two very rare types of pictorials that if you're into Persian rugs don't uh, you want to make sure that you see that video because those are just exceptional pieces so again wish you and your family the very best and I'll be coming back to you with many more videos as time goes on take care Best wishes. Bye-bye.